What's up everyone, it's Kate here from Marvelous Videos. Today we look at a mysterious curse from Junji Ito's story Uzumaki, explained. Uzumaki is a Japanese horror film from the year 2000, based on Junji Ito's manga of the same name. It was shown at the 2000 Fantasia Film Festival. Even during the peak of J-horror when tropes and formulas were becoming predictable, there were also odd entries like Uzumaki, directed by Akihiro Higuchi, also known as Higuchinsky. The film is based in the small town of Kurosucho, which is plagued by a mysterious curse of spirals. Starring in Higuchinsky's feature film directorial debut are actors Eriko Hatsune, Fifan, Hinako Saiki, and Shin Yuan Kyung. Regarding Junji Ito's original manga, the director noted that he was more interested in the changes the Uzumaki, the spiral, induced in some people and places, transforming a familiar setting into something unusual and strange, which is exactly the vibe we sought to capture in his adaptation. Uzumaki was a part of the Japanese horror wave that began with the increasing popularity and success of Ring in 1998. For an imaginative new fusion, the new Japanese horror revival aggressively plucked imagery from manga, hentai, and traditional Japanese kaiden. As a result, Uzumaki is a real oddity in the world of J-horror, focusing on mood rather than horrors, making it a characteristic that many lovers of the genre have yet to discover. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Uzumaki 2000 Uzumaki has a Lovecraftian effect as it indulges in the madness of the simple and unavoidable things in life. It's a tale about all-consuming madness over one of the most commonly occurring natural phenomena, the spiral. Higuchinsky starts the film slowly, like the outer portions of a spiral, and quickly tornadoes one deep into the madness. The story of the film begins slowly, with an adolescent schoolgirl heroine, Kiria Gashima, facing weird events. It's a film in which the plot, which is split into four parts, is more of a line that moves through an environment of constantly increasing strangeness, from the mundane to the weirdly apocalyptic. The spiral obsession starts with the father of our heroine's boyfriend, Suichi Sato. Kiria finds him in an alleyway filming the corkscrew patterns on a snail shell so obsessively that he fails to even realize her presence. She finds out through her boyfriend that he's also working on a video scrapbook loaded with photographs of anything with a spiral or vortex shape. His strange fascination causes him to neglect his obligations at work and life as a normal human being. He declares that a spiral is the highest form of art and tries to pursue it in everything he can find. When he runs out a spiral patterned kamaboko, he furiously makes whirlpools in his miso soup. His wife and son are increasingly concerned about his obsessive behavior. The first shot of the film is the dead body of a schoolboy whose brains are splattered all over the floor. While it may seem unrelated at first glance, the story unfolds when Suichi tells Kiri about the boy being drawn into the spiral, resulting in his death. During this time, strange things keep happening at Kiri's school as well. A student named Katayama starts walking very slowly, dripping with a slimy material and only goes to school on rainy days. He seems to be growing a shell on his back as well. Suichi throws away his father's spiral collection, which causes his father to find anything and everything that could form a spiral. There's a rather terrifying shot where Sato's face becomes oblong and his eyes start turning into spirals. <laughs> His obsession with finding the spiral pattern results in him spinning in a spiral to his death in a washing machine while filming himself. Soon, the rest of the student population also starts sprouting shells, drinking huge amounts of water and crawling on the school's walls. It's later covered in the news when they fully turn into human-sized snails. Sakino, Kiri's classmate, begins to grow her hair in exaggerated curls, gaining control of her and other female classmates' minds. Whirl-like clouds rise in the sky and smoky ghost-like faces of victims who died in spiral-related ways accompany them during funerals. Shuichi's father's suicide intrigues Tamira, a reporter, and he gets obsessed with the story. Shuichi's mother, who has been in the hospital since her husband died, has developed a great fear of spirals. 
She shaves her hair and fingertips because of their spiral-like shapes, and Shuichi instructs the medical personnel to remove anything spiral-shaped so that his mother does not encounter them. After a millipede tries to creep into her ear while she's sleeping, she hallucinates her husband, telling her that there's another vortex in the deepest portion of her ear, tipping her over the edge and resulting in her suicide. <laughs> Interestingly, 6 and 9, which are virtually spiral numbers, can be found on the reporter's license plate, as a room number in the hospital and as a date in the video clip at the end of the movie. This goes on to show the attention to detail given by Hikachinsky. With this, the spiral tornadoes find their way into town. This obsession quickly spreads throughout the village, like a virus, causing residents' bodies to twist and reshape in all kinds of bizarre, horrible, and inhuman ways. The spiral's passion grows stronger as it engulfs them psychologically and physically, pushing them to the brink of insanity and eventually killing them. After obsessively creating spiral-shaped ceramics, Kiri's father takes a drill to his eye. A news crew reporting on the phenomenon becomes trapped in a tunnel and is later discovered as humanoid yet snail-like corpses. And Sakino's snake-like curls grow to an abnormal height, wrapping around a telephone pole and cables and electrocuting herself. A boy who wants Kiri to be his girlfriend throws himself in front of the car and is twisted around the axle. The car collides with a pole, causing Tamura's head to hit the windshield. Shuichi's body bends into a spiral-like contortion, as Kiri and Shuichi resolve to look for Kiri's father. He crawls up to Kiri and asks her to become a spiral as well. Since the movie was filmed before the manga was finished in 2004, the ending and origin of the movie are different from that of the manga. However, that hasn't stopped Higachinsky from not only crediting the manga writer Junji Ito by glimpsing at it in the film, but creating a unique and maddening masterpiece. While the film doesn't have the high quality visuals as seen in more modern horror films, it provides the same amount, or if not more, chills and creeps while watching. Higachinsky uses a lot of weird angles and creepy visuals throughout the entire film. He slowly turns the camera around like a spiral as well to create an unsettling effect resulting in a feeling of dread and anticipation. Overall, this combination of great acting, extremely frightening set dressing, and scenic aspects creates a nightmare atmosphere for people in the cursed remote village of Karuzu, while exceeding the movie's objective and idea. <laughs> the mysterious curse involving the otherworldly spirals. Part of the film's strangeness comes from the fact that it never explains why spiral patterns are causing such bizarrely compulsive behaviour and mutations. Throughout the movie, one keeps guessing how and why this obsession started and how does it end? What also intrigued us was the fact that we never got to know what happened to Kiri. It seems that she's the one narrating the story in the beginning. However, we can't tell where she goes after the boyfriend turns into a spiral and asks her to join him. Since the movie doesn't address these concerns as such, we will be diving into the world of the manga to figure out how the curse of the spiral works. According to the manga, the spiral is a mysterious and malevolent thing or force that wipes off the whole population of Karuza Cho at irregular periods every few centuries or millennia. Its identity and nature are unknown, however, it appears to be sentient to some level, as evidenced by its recurring interest in Kiri, and to a lesser extent, Shuichi. It could have come from the city of spirals beneath Caruso Cho, or not. It's impossible to say if the spiral is a curse, an infection, a being, or a force. It is said that it can infect and control the minds and bodies of humans. Apparently, it only affects the town of Caruso Cho and follows a pattern of killing. It starts with random deaths and disappearances, as well as abnormal cases of fixation with the pattern. These are followed by more severe consequences, such as numerous hurricanes and tornadoes, until Caruso Cho is rebuilt as a massive spiral row house, and everyone within is pulled into the city of spirals. The spiral is significantly less powerful in the film. It appears to be less adept at infecting people's minds and their bodies. It's not sapient in any way and thus cannot communicate. It cannot affect human abilities and is confined solely to Caruso Cho, with no implication of controlling other galaxies. In the manga, it's shown to be an omnipotent force that controls the minds and bodies of living beings, including animals. It can also control the atmosphere, air pressure, and weather of the town. 
However, in the movie, it can only control the water in Dragonfly Pond rather than the ocean, and it can't influence the rest of the weather or air pressure. The spiral also appears to be incapable of controlling animals or plants, just people. In the manga, Shuichi does not die. In fact, he has full immunity against the spiral, it seems. He could see and interact with the spiral without once being contaminated by it. Mrs. Gashima, who was shown to be deceased in the movie, but not in the manga, was contaminated by the spiral once and recovered. Kiri and Yasuo Gashima were also contaminated many times, but they recovered as well. <laughs> Why you should watch Uzumaki. Any Lovecraftian lover, anime fan, and in general maddening horror enthusiasts would love this film. Uzumaki is like a slow burn spiralling madness, pun intended. The 90 minute long film leaves you with a creepy, there is something under my skin kind of feeling. It intrigues one into the vast valley of horror. It shows us that horrifying, maddening and terrifying things are not only the supernatural that we cook up in our brains, but it's very much widely abundant in nature as well. Uzumaki shows us that anything can drive us to an obsessive madness if we let it. It has a stimulating plot and cinematography. The visuals and camera angles enhance the creepiness of the plot brilliantly and keep you wanting more. The film suddenly starts increasing in momentum in the middle, like a spiral moving inward. The spiral metaphors are not only hidden in the scenes, Higuchinsky has managed to incorporate them brilliantly in his cinematography as well. The film is sure to entice and enrapture for the entire duration. The abrupt and unexplained ending leaves you breathless and wanting more. It's a unique film that has us obsessively reading the manga just to figure out how far the mystery of this spiral goes. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks.